Thank God. <laughs> so, Om Gana, Timirandasha, Gananjana, Shlokaya, Chakshurun, Veli, Tam, Yena. Toz Mai, Shiva, Veda, Maha, Nama, Om, Vishnu, Vraya, Krishna, Pristaya, Udle, Shiva, Bhakti, Vrata, Swami, Kali. Namaste, Saraswati, Devi, Bhagavad, Pachani, Devasisha, Shunyabadi, Pascha, Chate, Shatarani. So, I uh, joined the Krishna Conscious Movement in 1971 and it was by the mercy of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada, that I was able to join because, as many of you know, the uh, devotees were quite fanatic in those days and I wouldn't say too empathic. And they preached very strongly I got told so many things like I was going to hell. I thought this was actually a Krishna conscious edition of born again Christians. You know, born again Krishnas instead. <laughs> so I decided to avoid the movement. Even though I liked the philosophy, I was chanting, of course I was vegetarian and everything like that. But it was Prabhupada's personal presence and compassion. And it's not really anything that Prabhupada said to me at that point. It was his whole demeanor, his whole mood. He emanated love and compassion and causeless love and compassion for everybody. And you could feel it. It was emanating from every pore or from the spiritual energy, whatever you want to say. And I was just overwhelmed. And I recognized him immediately as my spiritual master. And I did what I didn't want to do. I joined the Hare Krishna movement. <laughs> of course, the Hare Krishna movement at that time was pretty tough. I mean, you were only allowed like four and a half or five hours of sleep a night. And even if during, you had to go to Bhagavatam, you had to go to Mangalarti. And even if you wanted to take a bathroom break, you had to ask permission. You had to raise your hand. And you had a brahmacharya accompany you to make sure that you came back on time. <laughs> because many of us, you know, we'd go to bed and then fall asleep. <laughs> or we'd fall asleep in class. So it, it was quite austere. And I endured this because I wanted to please Prabhupada. I understood what Prabhupada was enjoying. And now it's, you know, the age of 75. I'm understanding a little bit more physically what Prabhupada had to endure to take his boat across the ocean. I mean, tomorrow I'm supposed to go to Australia and just the thought of, you know, a plane flight where you get to see com comfortably and it's only a few hours. I'm going, oh my God, I gotta do that. But Prabhupada was in this boat in the Atlantic Ocean. The Atlantic Ocean is not peaceful. Of course, it was more peaceful when Prabhupada went across. He actually, the captain, Pandya, said, this is the most peaceful crossing he's ever had. I mean, Krishna was, as Prabhupada said, rowing the boat. On the boat, Krishna, Prabhupada had this vision of Krishna in his various incarnations, rowing the boat across the ocean. And so, that's actually what Prabhupada envisioned, and actually that's what happened. And Krishna was arranging everything for Prabhupada. So anyway, so I can say, you know, I was initiated 1972, early 72. Uh, January actually is when the letter was written about my initiation. So I can say that is actually my birthday. So I'm not actually 75. <laughs> That makes me feel a lot better. <laughs> so it's like 1972, and it's 2024 now, so you know, it's like 22 years from 75. And then Prabhupada is my father. You know, of course, I had a birth father, and I'm very grateful to him. And he gave me everything so I had to faculties to be able to join the Krishna Conscious Movement and the whatever the position and the education and everything like that. But Prabhupada is my eternal father. 
And eternally means that I have to dedicate myself eternally to serving Him, regardless of how my body feels and regardless of what's happening with the mind. That's called Buddhi Yoga. Uh, as we know from Bhagavad Gita, that there's different material elements. Uh, earth, water, fire, air, your mind, intelligence, and false ego. So, but aparei mitis tvanyam praktin vidi meipanam jiva buddha mahalo yade yadam tegam dari tejaga. Apart from these material elements, there's the soul. Uh, and we have to rise above the material element platform of being absorbed in this earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, and even material intelligence, and fix our spiritual intelligence upon the directions of His divine grace. A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shiva and use that spiritual intelligence to control mind and the senses. And that's Krishna consciousness. And if you do that, you'll be happy. Now, I was just listening to a class with Prabhupada. Uh, not a class, but actually a memory. Where the devotee asked Prabhupada, he said, Prabhupada, I joined the Krishna consciousness movement. And I'm still not very happy. And Prabhupada said to him, but you're less miserable. So, but I can say factually that if we do fix our intelligence in this way, we will experience great happiness. Not from the body. The body is not going to give you great happiness. And not from the material mind, but from the heart and from the soul. So on this day, uh, I am requesting all the devotees to dedicate their hearts and souls and activities to the mission and service of His Divine Grace, Shiva Prabhupada. And that mission and service is one of compassion, as devotees were talking about. Uh, having unlimited compassion for others. Like Haridas Thakur, being whipped in was it, 22 marketplaces and having compassion for the people who were whipping him. So that's what we should aspire for and that will be pleasing to Krishna. And that will be service to Srimati Radharani. I'm just reading the Brihad Bhagavatam, which is actually one of my favorite books. And Srimati Radharani has this Devotee in the material world, he's a, a material Brahman, those of you who know this story. But he's not really a direct devotee of Shimanti Radharani. He's a devotee of her expansion. That is Durga. And Durga, somehow or other, gave this devotee the uh, Gopal Mantra. <laughs> and this devotee is chanting, chanting, chanting. And so Srimati Radharani becomes so compassionate upon this personality, even though the personality has taken shelter of his, of her. Expansion of an expansion of an expansion. Because Srimati Radharani's direct expansions are the other gopis, especially the leaks of And then the uh, then there's the expansion of the uh, wives of Krishna, especially. Rukmini in Dwarka, and then the Lakshmi's, and then after that we have Durga. And so she's taking so much compassion, she calls this devotee, this coward boy, uh, Sarupa, who was previously Gopal, Gopal Kumar. She calls him from the spiritual world, <laughs> and she says to him, You have to go and save. My devotee. So this is the compassion. Not only Radharani's compassion, of course, that's 
superlative. But the compassion of a devotee like Sarupa, who leaves the spiritual world, or like Srila Prabhupada, who left the spiritual world to come and get us. And that's the highest ecstasy. Or like Narada Muni, who's simply traveling everywhere, trying to help others. So if I can leave you all with any sort of message today, that should be our aspiration. To give Krishna to others. To tolerate in giving Krishna to others. Be ready to make sacrifices in giving Krishna to others. All right. So, thank you very much for all these kind words of appreciation. And whatever qualities, good qualities you may see, that I have manifested, they're all actually because of my connection with Sri Prabhupada. And whatever bad qualities you see, that's me. So, thank you very much, so we'll continue, and I know everybody's anxious for Prashana. So what's the next item? Guru Puja. All right, Guru Puja, and then Prashana, right? Yeah, Kirtan. Kirtan, and then Prashana. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. And actually, um, everyone can come up and say um, pay their obeisances to Gurudev on stage. You can during the Guru Puja. During the Guru Puja, you can say. <laughs>
Thank <laughs> you.